Well, I think the coaches win generally, and I think the schools tend to lose because they're they're having to, you know, their mission is to uh, is not sports. Really, their mission is academic or should be. Mm -hmm. And the, the sports obviously throws off a lot of value, and that's why you know that's why we've seen this 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 numbers race and almost an arms race when it comes to coaching salaries. Um, so I, I think that. The, the, the institutions are competing with each other for limited talent, so I think the real beneficiaries are the coaches. All these parties, both sides of these transactions, are heavily represented. So, you know, the old days where you might have a uh, one-sided situation just is not the case. The, the coaches have some of the best legal talent around. The universities can and should have excellent lawyers. So the idea that anyone is getting taken advantage of that, uh, to me, is uh, implausible. There's an old saying, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. And you have to have a good lawyer that can negotiate with the institution to get you the best possible deal. You may be in a situation where you're interested in the longer term, you may be interested in more flexibility. You have to tell your lawyer that as a coach and, and say, look, these are the three things that are most important to me and here's what I need in my contract. There's always been a limited number of head coaches that are that are considered really marquee or premier coaches. We're starting to see now these assistant coaches, a particularly good offensive line coach or a quarterback guru or someone who's supposed to be a great recruiter, those guys now have leverage as well. And I think that uh, you know, they need lawyers and they need lawyers to protect their interests.